Hello everyone, you are watching Physio Classroom channel and in this video of Brunstrom therapy series, we are going to learn about the seven important stages of hemiplegia recovery as described by Signe Brunstrom. Brunstrom noted by observing large number of hemiplegic patients that almost a stereotypic sequence of event takes place during the process of recovery post stroke. These stereotype sequence of events following hemiplegia were divided by Brunstrom into seven stages. Each stage has certain key characteristics and features. So let's learn about them one by one. In Brunstrom stage one, the hemiplegic upper and lower limb remains completely flaccid with no tone. There is complete areflexia that is the deep tendon jerks remain absent. Patient is unable to produce any voluntary movement from the hemiplegic side. So these are the key characteristic features of the stage 1 of hemiplegia recovery. Brunstrom stage 2 is characterized by onset or development of spasticity in the hemiplegic upper and lower limb. Spasticity develops first in the strongest components of the flexor and extensor synergy, especially the biceps in the paralytic upper limb and quadriceps in the paralytic lower limb. The physiotherapist can now very easily feel resistance to passive movements. The second key feature of stage 2 is that the basic limb synergies start getting initiated as associated reactions, which means that when the hemiplegic patient puts extra effort from the normal side, then there is a reflexive stimulation of basic limb synergies in the hemiplegic side. The third key feature of stage 2 is that some hemiplegic patients at this stage can also exhibit some voluntary movements in the paralytic side. Brunstrom stage 3 is characterized by further increase in the sparsity levels with sparsity reaching its peak. At this stage, the hemiplegic patient gains voluntary control over the basic limb synergy movements. That is, the patient can now initiate and perform the basic limb synergies, but it is not necessary that patient can complete the full range of motion. Brunstrom comments that stage 3 can be considered as the stage of semi-voluntary control because the hemiplegic patient now has gained voluntary control over the movement or initiation of the synergy but has no control over the outcome of the movement. That is, no matter how the patient initiates the movement, the outcome is always going to be the same which is the flexion and the extension synergy movements. Patient will not be able to perform any movement outside the basic limb synergy. In Brunstrom stage 4 of hemiplegia recovery, the patient can now master certain movements outside the basic limb synergy. Initially, the patient finds some difficulty in performing these movements, but gradually he or she can perform the movements outside synergy with ease. Brunstrom has suggested to test three key movements outside the basic limb synergy to determine that the hemiplegic patient has actually entered into the stage 4 of recovery. These are to ask the patient to take the hemiplegic upper limb and place it behind the body, to perform pronation and supination movements with the elbow kept at 90 degree flexion and arm beside the body and the third one is to horizontally elevate the hemiplegic upper limb while keeping the elbow extended. So if the patient can perform one or more of these movements, then we can categorize him into the stage 4 of hemiplegic recovery. Similarly, for the lower limb, Brunstrom suggests that if the hemiplegic patient can perform knee flexion beyond 90 degrees in sitting position by sliding the foot on the floor and can perform ankle dorsiflexion movement in sitting without lifting the foot off the ground, then he can be classified into the stage 4 of hemiplegia recovery. Also, please note that it is not necessary that both the upper limb and lower limb will fall in the same stage of recovery simultaneously. It is quite a possibility for the upper limb 
to be in a different stage of recovery as compared to the lower limb. In stage 4, the spasticity begins to decline but can still interfere with the performance of the movements outside the basic limb synergy, which means that the patient has to put extra effort to produce movements outside the synergy and gradually as the spasticity further declines, the movements becomes easier. In Brunstrom stage 5 of hemiplegia recovery, the patient can now master variety of movement combinations and is no longer confined to just the basic limb synergies. The sparsity declines further and makes movement production easier. The key movements for the upper limb that can help the physiotherapist determine that the patient has now entered into the stage 5 are ability to take the paretic upper limb into the horizontal elevation beyond 90 degrees up to 180 degree. Ability to abduct the paralytic upper limb to 90 degrees while keeping the elbow extended and ability to pronate and supinate while keeping the arm in the abducted position. Similarly, if the hemiplegic patient can perform isolated knee flexion on the paralytic side while keeping the hip extended or in neutral position during standing or can perform isolated ankle dorsiflexion in a step standing position then we can classify the patient into the stage 5 of hemiplegia recovery for the lower limb. In the stage 6 of Brunstrom recovery the spasticity disappears and the patient is now able to perform isolated joint movements. Patient now gains voluntary control over the performance of wide spectrum of movement combinations with near normal coordination. Brunstrom stage 7 is characterized by restoration of all normal functions and patient becoming completely independent in performance of all ADL activities in a normal, purposeful and coordinated manner. So these were the 7 stages of Brunstrom recovery for a hemiplegia patients. It needs to be remembered that recovery can get arrested at any stage and it is not necessary that all patients of hemiplegia will go through each of the stage of recovery. In our next video of Brunstrom therapy series, we are going to discuss and practically demonstrate the important sensory examinations for hemiplegia patients as suggested by Brunstrom. So see you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.